Hey guys, so for today's art project, I am needing to go out and get some materials for outside. So put on the sunglasses, put on shoes, I never wear shoes anymore, and I am on my way down to the river because for today's project, we are going to be painting river rocks, okay? So I'll talk to you when I get down to the river and show you what makes for a good rock to paint on and we'll get going from there. All right, so I made it to the river now let's talk about what type of rocks are going to work best for the paintings we're going to do. And maybe get a little bit of a tan while we're here, right? All right, so let's look at some of the stuff we have available. So when we're looking for rocks, there are some key things we want to remember. First and foremost, we want to make sure our rocks are smooth. So I went and found a couple and picked them out first. The paintings that we're going to be doing, you're going to want a nice smooth surface. I like this one because it was nice and round. Uh, it's got a little bit of pock marks in it, but honestly, it's not that bad. I could use either side, although that side is a bit of a dent. I thought this one was really interesting because one side of it is very flat. The other side is round. So this will be really easy to paint on because I'll be able to sit it on my desk really easily. But I also like having a bigger surface to work on. This one also is pretty flat on the bottom which I thought was a great idea, but is smooth and round on the top. Now, if you can find rocks that are more interesting shapes that give you some inspiration, like maybe you found one like this and you wanted this little bit to be a wing, or hmm, what else? Maybe you wanted this one and you wanted to turn it into a pyramid. If you can find shapes that are more interesting, it's gonna make your project more interesting. So find yourself a few rocks to work from, give yourself some options, different sizes, different shapes, Rinse them off at the river, and then I'll meet you back in my studio, and I'll talk to you about how to paint them. All right, I'm back here at my studio. Time to get started with the painting. So, first off, supplies you're gonna need. Obviously, we got our rocks. Make sure you wash them off, get them dry, make sure they're nice and clean. From there, you gotta go with your paints. So, I understand that you guys might have different options for paints. Uh, what also could work well is puffy paint. Um, any sorts of paints that you have laying around. I recommend that you limit your color palette though. So what I mean by that is don't choose every color under the rainbow. Limit it to three, four, five at the absolute most. That's gonna help you make for a more, uh, just a nicer composition, honestly. It's just gonna look better. I really like always adding in some pops of white, especially if your rocks are a little darker. That really helps make things really pop. And then I decided to go with a red purple, a regular purple, and a blue green. You're gonna need something to put your paint on. This is my paint palette. It's definitely worn over the years with lots of different paint on it, but I'll put my paint there. Water to rinse your brushes out on, and then what you're actually painting with. So you have some options. You could pick a paintbrush that actually has a small tip, because we're gonna be trying to do a lot of circles and dots, but trying to paint dots it's kind of a pain. What I'd recommend instead would be to use the end of your paint brushes and use these to dot on. It'll actually make some really nice dots that way. You could use a skewer. Skewers have the one really fat end and usually they also have a pointy end. Those could work well for different sizes of dots. Any little stick things you have hanging around. If you had a really big rock, you could even go as big as a Q-tip. I definitely wouldn't go that size for the size of rocks that I have though. That'd be a little too much. So let's get started. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of paint of each color. Now my rocks are not very big. I'm not gonna be doing huge paintings, so I do not have to put out very much color. Just tiny dots of each. Honestly, even the amount I'm putting out is probably way too much. So, decide what rock you're going to work on first. I think I'm going to go with my big rock, make life a bit easier. And first thing you want to do, we're doing a radial design, very much like our mandalas. And so it's going to be circular. So first thing I want to do is start and find my center. So I got to decide, my rock's not a perfect circle, or is it an oval? So I got to decide where do I want my center to be? I'm going to say about there. I think I'm going to have my center point be the red purple. And I'm just going to put my dot there. You decide how big your dots are going to be. 
But then from here, literally all you're doing is just working your way out with rows of dots. You can add in extra designs from there as well. I recommend kind of rinse. I even have a paper towel off to the side. And then I can get my next color. When I'm starting out my rows of colors, when I'm making these circles, I like to split my sections in half first. So do two dots directly across from each other. Then decide how many more I could fit. I betcha I could do kind of the T. Oops, that one smeared a bit. You know what's nice about painting with rocks? If it doesn't work, wipe it up quickly before it dries. Ha. Okay, so I got my four evenly spaced. Now I could come back in and put the dots in between them. Maybe I'll make these dots a little bit smaller. Now when you're using the end of a stick, you've got to reapply your paint often to it. It's not like a paintbrush where you can do quite a bit first. All right. Then you start going your other colors and you just keep working your way out, trying to keep it really even and balanced. Maybe this one I want to go a lot smaller. So I'm using this I honestly don't even know what it is. I've had it in my studio for a while. It's this random little tip. I think I'll go white for this one. I think for this one, I want to go a lot smaller so I can use my four dots from before to start it off. And then if I split in between there, you notice there's gonna be more space because obviously it's a bigger circle now. Sorry about that sound in the background. My neighbor is unloading some gravel from his car in his driveway is right next to my window. All right, so evenly adding our spaces here. Okay, now I've gotten out of it. At this point, I might wanna mix it up. Maybe I don't want to do just plain circles every time. So what I could do now is I could go back and do some bigger dots just of one color. Maybe I'll take my purples for this and my big stick. And I'm going to do bigger dots on every other spot of where the white ones were. I'm going to leave that space in between. I'll show you why in a second. All right. Now that it's spaced out, I'm going to take one of my smaller applicators and I'll use a color and I'll go around these dots and I'll make kind of that scalloped edge. A scalloped is where you have those bumps. So I can do a dot in between each one. And then from there, I'll literally do dots going around my big purple dot and make sure I always have the same number on each. So I'll do three extra dots around each. So that'll start to give a more scalloped edge and start to make things a little bit different. So my advice as you're working your way around these is mix things up. Maybe start your first one pretty simple. This is why I advise getting many rocks when you're down at the river. Give yourself some options. You can try out different things. This is just one way to make a cool sort of radial mandala type design. But you don't have to do it this way. You could paint anything you want on these rocks. This is just one idea to get you going. So I'm going to speed through this in a time lapse. You can see me finish this one and maybe we'll do something different on the next rock. So I finished up on the mandala one. You can see how in some places I added some extra dots, oops, some extra dots of different colors into some bigger areas. That can be a great way to add some extra detail. I want to show you a couple other ones I did. This one, it was both a mix of paint and Sharpie. So I painted first to give myself kind of a clean palette. And then I took some Sharpies that I had and I went back on top of it and wrote on it. I think this will be a fun one to leave out for people to find on their daily walks. And then also, as I was looking around my art room, I found this old shell that I painted uh, a couple years ago. So this was an old sand dollar. And it's a great way to show how it doesn't have to be rocks. You can paint any sort of stuff that you find. This was with some more pearlescent colors that I had at the time. Just showing a different way that you could do it. 
So have fun painting those rocks. Uh, remember, it does take a while for the paint to dry on the rocks because the rocks are not porous, so they're not absorbing any of the water or moisture. That means it's going to take longer for that paint to dry because it's purely just the air hitting it, not the paper hitting it like it would for a regular painting. Have fun painting some rocks.